And essentially, at a certain extent, we can say that ergodic theory consists in understanding the relation between these two dynamical systems. Okay, and in the theory, the fixed points of these operators play uh, a key role. Ex uh, essentially, the, the fixed points are the nothing but the uh, invariant measures. Okay, this is very classical, they're very well known. But they are not only measures. In fact, we can talk about distributions, which are nothing but uh, linear functionals on the space of smooth real functions, okay? In any analysis course, we learn that this space contain the space of measures. I mean, if we consider the space of finite sign measure, we, if we identify the space with the space of, with the dual space of continuous uh, real functions on the manifold, we have this inclusion. In general, the space of distribution is much, much bigger than the space of measure. A very simple example of a, me of a distribution which is not a measure is the derivative of the delta. This is the, the distribution given by evaluating any test function, uh, the derivative of the test function on zero. And since we are considering a, a smooth dynamical system, our operator F star that was originally defined on the space of measures can be naturally extended to the space of distributions. Okay, and essentially the, the formula is the same. Here I'm replacing the, the integral symbol by the usual or the classical brackets for evaluating distributions or any uh, functional. And we have essentially the same formula. And of course we talk about the invariant distributions. We can define the space of invariant distributions as the, as the fixed point set of this uh, new operator. And the natural question is, okay, this invariant distribution have any interesting dynamical meaning? Well, there are a very simple uh, and rather silly, in fact, example. As I said before, if, okay, if you have a diffeomorphism of the circle, for instance, and you know that the delta belongs to the invariant measure, that means that the zero, of course, this is equivalent to the fact that zero is if a fixed point. But if you know that the derivative of the delta belongs to the invariant distributions, this is equivalent to say that zero is a parabolic fixed point. So in certain way, the fact that this distribution is invariant is telling you something new. As I said, it's, this is a rather silly example. It's not very interesting, but it's a first, uh, it's a first point where you can see that invariant distribution has some additional information. It is not only a fixed point, but it's a parabolic fixed point. Okay? Very good. <coughs> so, the, a more interesting uh, application, a more interesting motivation for studying distributions are cohomological equations, and in fact, they, they are the, my original motivation for studying distributions. A cohomological equation is essentially a, a very simple linear difference equation uh, where phi is uh, data of the problem, u is uh, an unknown function, is unknown uh, of the equation. And these kind of equations appear very frequently in different contexts in dynamical systems. S and in general, it's not very easy to determine if certain function phi admits or not a solution. So uh, typically you study the space of those functions that admit a CR solution, which are usually called uh, CR co-boundaries, and you can easily see that the invariant measures, the, the space of invariant measures are natural obstructions for solving this equation. I mean, if you know that your equation admits a, a continuous solution, okay, of course this implies that the integral with respect to any invariant measure must be equal to zero. 
So in this sense, I, I'm saying that uh, invariant distributions are, uh, invariant measures are abstraction for solving the equation in the C0 topology, in the C0 category. And moreover, this, typically this condition is not uh, sufficient, but it's almost sufficient in the following sense, that if you take the closure of the space of those functions that can be solved, those function phi that admits a solution, then this, the, the closure coincides with the intersection of the uh, kernel of the function, of the, this, sorry, of the kernel of the measures. Okay, when I say the kernel, I'm thinking a measure as a linear function along the space of continuous uh, real functions. Okay, but this is, uh, these are almost all the abstraction that you have when you want to solve the equation in the C0 topology, but if you want to work in, the, in a more in a smoother category, you have to take care of distributions. Essentially, you have ex exactly the same result, but with invariant distributions here, okay? And this result, as the previous one, is nothing but Hambanach theorem. I mean, it's, it's a straightforward consequence of Hambanach theorem. So, as measure was, where the typical, the, the more important abstraction for solving this equation in the C0 topology, variant distributions are the typical abstraction for solving the equation in, in the C infinity category. Okay? A second application is a problem of ergodic deviations. Uh, I don't want to, to talk very, uh, all the details about the problem of ergodic deviation because uh, it's just a, a second motivation, and I, I won't talk about this. But essentially, the problem of ergodic deviation consists in uh, estimating the, the, Birk, the Birkhoff sum, this expression here, and try to estimate this for many, uh, many points on your phase space, um, in typically for uh, observable functions uh, with certain regularity, okay? And this problem, has a lot, uh, have certain relations with uh, invariant distributions. In fact, in, for hyperbolic system, <coughs> uh, invariant distributions appear in the work of, of Ruel, Polycott, and Marina Radner. They appear in the associated to the poles of the zeta functions associated to, to action A, diffeomorphism or flows. And they are used to estimate this certain kind of central limit theorem for hyperbolic systems. They also, invariant distributions also appear in parabolic systems like interval exchange maps and whole cycle flows. Uh, essentially, the first result, the first work is due to Konsevich and Sorich. Uh, well, after that, a lot of people have worked on this. Uh, improving the estimate, there are some recent work of, of Marcelo and Artur, uh, and okay, estimating the Lyapunov exponent of the concebit sorry cycle, which is essentially the, the main motivation for studying this cycle are the ergodic deviations. And what happened in the elliptic case? Well, we will see that in the elliptic case, typically there are not many invariant distributions, and in fact, this is a problem in, in my personal opinion, uh, er, the problem of ergodic deviation for elliptic system is not very satisfactory so far. So let's concentrate on this case, in the case of elliptic systems. The prototypical example of, a, of an elliptic system are rigid translations onto Rai. This is very classical result due to Kronecker. We know that the rigid translation is minimal if and only if Lebesgue measure is ergodic. And if and only if it's uniquely ergodic, okay? Very classical. But uh, a less known uh, result is that uniquely ergodic translations are in fact distributionally uniquely ergodic. That means that there is no new invariant distribution. The Lebesgue measure essentially generates the space of invariant distributions. That means that you up to multiplication by a, a real constant, you only have one invariant distribution. And uh, this is the, the first instance where, as I told you before, 
In elliptic cases, typically you don't have many invariant distribution. This is not completely true. There are certain examples in, in elliptic dynamics that I won't talk about here. Uh, certain result with, with Arturo Avila that we constructed uh, diffeomorphisms which are uh, topologically conjugate to translation but they have a lot of invariant distributions. But okay, this is uh, another point. And the proof of this result, which I said is, belongs to the folklore, it's very, very easy. Uh, essentially, the, the key word here is Fourier series. You can prove that this is a notation for trigonometric polynomials. I'm saying here that the, the space of trigonometric polynomials with zero integral, this is the, the zero here, uh, it's contained on the space of infinity co-boundaries. This is very easy, it's just an exercise. Um, by stone bayer theorem, we know that the closure of this space coincides with this space. I mean the closure of three spaces here is coincides. And because of, the, of this result, this implies that Lebesgue measure is the only invariant distribution. Okay, very well. So, we, our purpose was to study distributionally uniquely ergodic diffeomorphisms, okay? So the natural question is, are there some other examples of distributionally uniquely ergodic diffeomorphisms? Well, there are some other examples. Uh, a very recent result with, with Artur is that every infinity diffeomorphism with irrational rotation number uh, is uh, distributionally uniquely ergodic. At first, this result doesn't seem to be very uh, surprising because you say, okay, every, any circle diffeomorphism is topologically conjugate to a rigid ergodic translation, but the, typically the conjugacy is only uh, topologically, and so you cannot translate the, the distribution from, from one point to the other, from one diffeomorphism to the other. And in fact, this paper of 2010 is, is rather technical. I mean, it's far from, from obvious that this is, this is true. And a second kind of example, which is also belongs to the folklore, is that uh, if you take <coughs> any tori and you take the infinity closure of the conjugacy class of, of synfi by infinity diffeomorphisms, then in the closure, generically, all diffeomorphisms are uh, distributionally uniquely ergodic, okay? And in this space, after several works of uh, Anosov, Katok, Michel Hermann, Albert Fati, uh, we know that there are many exotic examples here, okay? Typically, a generic diffeomorphism here, for instance, is weak mixing. So it's completely different from a, a translation. And nevertheless, they are weak mixing, but they are distributionally uniquely ergodic. Okay, I mean, uh, you can intersect both generic sets. So the question is, is there any other example than this? In 2008, Giovanni Forni conjectured that uh, the only manifold supporting DUE diffeomorphisms are to write. Uh, well, there were, there were some words supporting this conjecture, and they were close related to the Hermann Katok conjecture that say, Hermann Katok conjecture said that if you have, this is Katok conjecture said that if you have F is DUE, and the space of Co-cycles of co-boundaries, sorry, C infinity co-boundaries is C infinity close. This implies that your manifold is a torus and F is C infinity conjugate to a rigid to a diophantine translation. In fact, diophantine translation. And well, this conjecture of form is in certain ways stronger. Um, the, the reason to believe in this conjecture was that uh, typical, the most powerful tools that you have to study 
cohomological equations and this invariant distribution in these settings are harmonic analysis techniques. And well, he proposed this theorem, this conjecture, sorry. And the main theorem I want to talk about today is, uh, well, contrary examples to Forney's conjecture. Uh, in fact, in a joint work with Artur and Bassam Fayat, we constructed examples of DOE diffeomorphisms in certain homogeneous manifolds. Uh, there are two different kinds of homogeneous manifolds. In all the cases we need, this is a rather disturbing hypothesis, we need to have a, two factors, a circle and a homogeneous uh, manifold. And the two cases that we can deal with so far are the cases where the manifold P is a closed nil manifold, that is the, uh, the quotient of a simply connected nil potent Lie group by the uniform uh, lattice. And the second case, which was, in my opinion, is much more interesting, is a case where G is a compact Lie group and H is an arbitrary, uh, it's an arbitrary uh, subgroup, close subgroup of the, of the group. And, well, I will explain why I, I believe that. In fact, the second case is more surprising. So let me uh, tell you very briefly some of the ideas to, to prove this result. Uh, first of all, the main difficult to, to prove this problem is that, as I said before, harmonic analysis techniques are the most powerful uh, tools to study these problems in the elliptic case and especially in the homogeneous case. Okay? But the problem is that there is no new DOE example in the universe of the uh, homogeneous diffeomorphisms. And this is essentially contained in the, the, in the work of Flaminio and Forney for the Neil Potent case. And a couple of weeks ago, I learned from Federico Rodriguez Hertz that he's working with Livio Flaminio and Giovanni Forney right now. And apparently, they completely uh, proved this, uh, this assertion here, this claim. The, I mean, if you have a DOE uh, homogeneous diffeomorphism, then the manifold is a torus. And the, the tra yeah, well, of course, you have a translation. So the, here, you, you cannot uh, hope to, to get a homogeneous, um, a homogeneous example. So the problem is, if you don't have a homogeneous example, typically you cannot apply uh, harmonic analysis techniques. And this is a problem. Well, essentially what we did was to, deal, uh, to work with homogeneous Q products. Okay, so you have, this is essentially the reason why we need the two factors, the circle and the homogeneous fiber. And we have, sorry, and we have skew product of this form here. You have only a translation on the first coordinate and also a translation on the second coordinate and the translation on the second coordinate depends on the first one. Okay, uh, well, we work in the anosov katok space. This is rather classical. You take all the conjugacy classes, all the conjugacy class of uh, these translations. Here, notice that I'm putting here the identity, and I'm uh, conjugating with uh, certain particular cases of uh, skew products, skew products which preserve the fiber. And I take this infinity closure. And typically, you, this is also rather uh, classical, you can show, prove that in any manifold, DOE diffeomorphisms uh, form a G delta uh, set. The problem is that in most of the cases, we suppose, we guess that in most of the cases, this G delta set is empty. And so, essentially, what you do, you take a f sequence of functions uh, which is dense on the space of of functions, which this mu here means zero integral. Here, the measure mu is a nothing but the hard measure on the, on the homogeneous manifold. You define, you define this space here, 
And you can easily show that the intersection of this uh, set here is a coincide with the space of the UE diffeomorphisms. Um, well, it's very easy to see that these AN sets are open. The problem is that you have to show that they are dense. And this is where harmonic analysis appears in the picture. Uh, essentially, harmonic analysis is used to choose these sequences here. Uh, the main lemma, it's also rather classical. It's a very classical result in, uh, or typical of uh, anosov katok technique. And essentially, we, this is the key here, and this is the main contribution of the work, to how to choose these nice functions. And, well, we have this result. Uh, notice that all these maps here are periodic. That means that if you take the Q power of them, you have the identity. And so in this case, to have a, a, co a co-boundary, it's essentially any function that annihilates when you sum up to the, the period of the uh, diffeomorphism. So how you choose the, the invariant measure, the, sorry, the sequence of nice functions? Well, in the case of uh, nil manifolds, let me concentrate in a very particular case, in the case of uh, Heisenberg group. And let's consider the Heisenberg with real coefficient is the whole group, and with integral coefficient is the latest that we are considering. And if you take a function here, you have almost, almost Fourier series. So that's the reason why this is not very surprising. You have Fourier series in the following sense, you can, sorry, the t coefficient here can be, any function here can be written in this way. And if you enter in the zero coefficient, you also can write a kind of uh, Fourier series using the C coordinate. It is not true that all the Fourier coefficients here are C2 periodic, but the good point is that the zero one, which is uh, the worst, and well, I don't have time to explain why this is so important, but this is the, the key of the method. This is really a, a, a C2 periodic function. And this is essentially because if you take a Heisenberg and you take the quotient by the center, you have an, ab an abelian group. And this is typically of, of an inel potting group. This, proce and this procedure here can be apply in any, uh, in any in a manifold, uh, nilpotent Lie group. Uh, this is essentially the context of Malsep theory. Uh, what you do is you choose the function phi n as polynomials, trigonometric polynomials, uh, taking here only finite sums of this, of this kind, finite sum, not only with INSE, but uh, a finite amount of, of terms. And what you do in the case, or in the compact case, well, you have to use representation theory. Uh, a Lie group naturally acts on the space of L2 functions. Um, a very classical result of Peter and Weil said that this uh, representation can be decomposed in, in finite dimensional representations. And so you take a basis for this finite dimension of representations. And you, can, you use those functions for in, this, in the same way that you use in the nilpotent case. And the third step here is uh, a very geometric result, which is, for me it was rather surprising when we got this result, uh, which is not a, a homogeneous result. I mean, if you take any finite dimensional linear subspace of this, and you have m is any manifold, you always can find a loop on the manifold and a, a, an integer a natural number m such that this sum is equal to zero. So in certain way, that means that the, your loop is very well distributed with respect to functions on E. And well, with all these ingredients, it's rather easy to, to prove the, uh, the, the theorem. Okay, thank you very much. Thank you.